Good morning, students. This is Scotty G reporting from Counseling. Um, please check your student square as I'm talking right now because you received the student square about your course request for the 2020-21 school year. We are right now taking the time to review your classes to make sure they're correct. The way you're going to do this is you're going to go to your ARIES portal and under classes you're going to look and see what's been selected for next year. We're hoping that we have everything correct and that everything matches what you gave us. There have been some changes and the changes have been updated to the best of our ability. Um, we are including a list of classes that are available so if you're still sort of shopping around or thinking about different electives or things that you might want to take, please check that list. Once you are done with that, you're going to be looking for a Google Doc form to let us know whether or not your classes are fine or whether or not you have some changes that we need to make. Whether we made a mistake or whether you have a different level or whether or not you've just changed your mind and decided that you want a new elective that's listed on the list of classes. It's really important that you take the time to look at this now because we are arranging schedules as we speak and we really need to make sure that this information is up to date. So we ask you that you check your student square, follow all these directions. You can see them all again. It says them all again, except it doesn't come straight from me. Do this. And then at the end, there will be again a Google Doc. Fill that out. If you choose to not fill out the Google Doc, we're just assuming that all of your classes are correct. Thank you, guys. Have a great Friday and have a great weekend. Hey, Chargers. Welcome back to another DP News at Home. We have a lot to talk about. So let's get started. This is DP News. And it starts now. Some students here at DP have been working through the pandemic as essential workers. Let's hear from Ashlyn about what it's like to be an essential worker at Target. Hey DP, today I'm going to be talking about what it's like to be an essential worker during the pandemic. It is definitely a very new and very weird environment to be working right now. Everything is distanced and then we're cleaning almost all the time. Uh, I wash my hands every single time I leave the floor. I use hand sanitizer all the time. We are encouraged to wash our hands as much and we don't get penalized for it if we're doing it a lot during our shift. It's it's weird to say the least, to and especially to be working now, since uh, sometimes I see people from my school or uh, sometimes I see people that I know, or sometimes I walk into the store and there's almost no one at all. It fluctuates and it's kind of a bring back to reality of what we're really going through as a country and as a nation. My place of work has graciously allowed us to get paid two extra dollars now, and that's being extended until the 30th of this month. As a minor working right now, and also while I'm doing online school, they've obviously been considerate considering my schedule, and they've also been very strict as far as interacting on the sales floor. Before, usually you'd be able to talk to your other coworkers while working, but now it's very much so if you have a question, you use the walkie-talkie or you speak directly to your leader. Guests at my place of work are encouraged to not come within six feet of workers. We can help you, but we are not allowed to touch your iPhones or touch products. My place of work also now has a new policy where if you call in sick to one of your shifts, you have to tell them what symptoms you are presenting if you are truly sick. And if you are presenting some of the corona symptoms, it is encouraged that you have to call before you show up for your next shift. Because of the new CDC regulations, I have to wear a mask whenever I enter my job and everybody else who enters my workplace has to as well. It's required and you will be sent out of the store if you do not have one. Also, I am required to sanitize my equipment, which is my box cutter and then also my name tag before I go to work to make sure that there are no excessive germs on it. I sanitize both of my things with a little bottle of hand sanitizer that I carry in my car at all times. I'm Ashlyn Draper for DP News. Big shout out to our students who are working and attending class during the school closures. For those that have a little bit more free time for creative projects right now, be sure to check out the Youth 805 film. It's a great chance to show your artistic skills.
This is a really great opportunity. I think I might submit one of my DP News packages. If you don't want to make a film, Connor has some suggestions on films to watch this week. What's poppin' DP, and welcome to episode four of Movie Review. Today we're going over some of our favorite time travel movies because we wish we could go back in time before this quarantine. The Terminator is a thrilling action movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. Ethan Fung, a DP freshman, says that The Terminator is an intricately philosophical movie about love and life. While we think this review is a little far-fetched, we do agree that The Terminator is one of the best sci-fi time travel movies ever made. Avengers Endgame is an interesting take on time travel that breaks the typical notion that seeing yourself in the past changes everything. Xander Vasquez, a DP freshman, agrees that this movie was very influential in the idea of movie time travel. Overall, a very good watch for anyone who has three hours to spare. Back to the Future is starting out our quarantine classics as the best time travel movie to ever exist. According to one DP student, this movie is a piece of art that shaped how pop culture thinks of time travel. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Groundhog Day is our last time travel movie for this week. Starring Bill Murray as Mr. Groundhog, this movie shows how he gets trapped reliving the same day over and over again. Again and again, he keeps reliving the same day until he finds a way out of this predicament. Well, DP, that's it for today. But as always, that's just a review. A movie review. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go watch Back to the Future. If you're not up to watching movies, there are, here are some things the teachers do when they are stressed. Hey, DP. Things are tough right now, and we know it's a really stressful time for everybody. So we asked some of our teachers and staff to share what they do to feel better when they're stressed. Here's their advice. I hang out with my dogs and I'm learning to make ice cream. Wow. When I feel stressed, I go running. The Jarvis Scotty G here. When you're stressed, working out and lifting weights is great, so I lift weights. When I'm feeling bad or stressed out, I like to go in nature. 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 To feel better, I practice yoga. I exercise with my family. I walk my dogs. I like to get outside with my kids and get some fresh air. I reconnect with my dog, Coco. We, we work, work with, with our, our hands. hands. I listen to music really loud in my car. Those are some great tips. Did you know Galita was one of the last towns to order the new Max Grill? The unanimous vote was on Tuesday night. All essential businesses are requiring everybody to wear a face cover made from cloth. If you were wondering how to create a mask, I was able to create a video with Rebecca Jam Goshen. Hey DP, it's Rebecca Jam Goshen, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make these masks. So the first thing I did was I placed the main cotton pieces with the design facing back to back. Then I ironed them. Next I traced the interfacing with a pen and then cut two pieces of the interfacing with scissors or a rotary cutter. I personally like the rotary cutter better because it makes it easier to cut things. Then I placed the pattern on top of the main two cotton fabric pieces and cut them and then I ironed them. Then I sewed along the longest side. Then I cut another two pieces of the cotton fabric. This will be the lining. After, I sewed the two lining pieces together on the longest side with about a half inch seam allowance. After, I trimmed off any excess fabric without cutting off the seam. I did this on both the main and the lining pieces. Then I turned both pieces inside out so I could not see the seam anymore. Then I ironed. 
Next, I place the lining on top of the main piece. The main piece should face upwards. Then I pin them together. Then sew with either a zigzag or straight stitch across both of the longest ends. Next, I trimmed off any excess without cutting the seams off. Then I turned it inside out and ironed. Next, I folded the ends inside by about 3 fourths of an inch and ironed. Then, I got a single pipe cleaner and I folded it in half. Then I twisted it downwards. This will become the nose bridge for your mask. After that, I placed it inside and pushed it to the top side of the mask. Then, I pinned it to stop it from moving. Next, I sew around the pipe cleaner to hold the bridge from moving. Finally, I cut two 6 inch pieces of elastic and pinned it into the ends of the mask. Then, I sewed the two ends of the mask with the elastic. There you go, DP, a finished mask. Hope you enjoy. That was great, Rebecca. I'm definitely gonna make one for myself. And you have some mad sewing skills. Anyways, that's the end of our show. Thank you all for watching and see you guys next week.